Thank you. أولاً أود أن أرحب بكم Good جميعاً morning. اليوم First, I would like في to مؤتمر الصحفي لبعثة الأمم المتحدة لتقصي الحقائق في ليبيا لأعرض عليكم نتائج تقريرنا الثالث اسمي محمد أوجار رئيس بعثة تقصي الحقائق في ليبيا وأنا موجود هنا مع زملائي الخبراء في مجال حقوق الإنسان تريسي روبينسون وشالوكا بيان وسنطلعكم اليوم على التقرير الثالث لبعثة عن حالة حقوق الإنسان في ليبيا أستهل كلمة هذه بالقول أنه ما كان لهذا التقرير أن يرى المور بدون جميع من ساعد البعثة طوال الفترة المشمولة بالتقرير من أذار إلى حزيران وأود أن أتقدم بالشكر لأولئك الذين قدموا لنا شهادتهم الشخصية وإفادتهم المكتوبة وغيرها من المعلومات التي كانت تعني في بعض الحالات إعادة إحياء الصدمة التي مر بها أو المخاطرة بسلامتهم الشخصية أنشئت البعثة عملا بقرار مجلس حقوق الإنسان 43 39 وكلفت بالقيام بطريقة مستقلة ونزيهة بتحديد وقائع وظروف حالة حقوق الإنسان في جميع أنحاء ليبيا لتوثيق الانتهاكات والتجاوزات المزعومة للقانون الدولي لحقوق الإنسان والقانون الدولي الإنساني من قبل جميع الأطراف في ليبيا منذ بداية عام 2016 والحفاظ على الأدلة بهدف, بهدف ضمان محاسبة مرتكب الانتهاكات والتجاوزات وقد أجرت البعثة أكثر من 300 مقابلة منذ أن بدأت عملها ونظمت أربع بعثات تحقيق إلى ليبيا وتأسف البعثة لعدم تمكنها من السفر إلى سبها على الرغم من استعداداتها المكثفة وقد كانت هذه الزيارة ضرورية للتحقيق بشكل دقيق في الادعاء في الادعاءات المتعلقة بالانتهاكات في الجنوب وفي الوقت الحاضر لا تزال ثقافة الإفلات من الحفاظ قائمة وتشكل عقبة كبيرة أمام تحقيق المصالحة وجبر الضرر للضحايا وعائلاتهم وقد وصلنا توجيه جهودنا لتقصي الحقائق في انتهاكات حقوق الإنسان والتجاوزات والجرائم الدولية التي تتحدى انتقال ليبيا إلى السلام والديمقراطية وسيادة القانون وفي الوقت الحاضر لا تزال ثقافة الإفلات من العقاب قائمة وتشكل عقبة كبيرة أمام تحقيق المصالحة وجبر الضرر للضحايا وعائلاتهم وقد وصلنا توجيه جهودنا لتقصي الحقائق في انتهاكات حقوق الإنسان والتجاوزات والجرائم الدولية التي تتحدى انتقال ليبيا إلى السلام الديمقراطي. أما فيما يتعلق بالحرمان من الحرية فقد حد فقد حددت البعثة أنماطا واضحة لانتهاكات وتجاوزات حقوق الإنسان في 27 مكانا من أماكن الاحتجاز الرسمية وغير الرسمية بما في ذلك السجون السرية وغير القانونية وبناء على أكثر من 80 مقابلة مع محتجزين سابقين وحاليين وأقاربهم وشهود مطلعين لدى البعثة أسباب معقولة للاعتقاد بأنه تم ارتكاب جرائم ضد الإنسانية مثل القتل والتعذيب والسجن والاغتصاب والاختفاء القسري وغيرها من الأعمال اللا إنسانية في عدد من السجون كما, كما تم إجراء تحقيقات مفصلة في بلدة ترهونة حيث تم توثيق ارتكاب ميليشيات الكان على نطاق واسع ومنهجي لجرائم الإبادة والقتل والاختفاء القسري والتعذيب والسجن والتي ترقى إلى مصاف جرائم الإنسانية كما نجحت البعثة في تحديد المقابر الجماعية غير المكتشفة سابقا في ترهون من خلال استخدام تكنولوجيا متقدمة وستشارك بعثة تقصي الحقائق النتائج التي توصلت إليها مع السلطات الليبية للمساعدة في الوفاء بواجبها في التحقيق مع الجنات ومقاضاتهم ومعاقبتهم والمساهمة في وصول الضحايا إلى حقهم في معرفة الحقيقة وعلى الرغم من الجهود المستمرة التي تبذلها السلطات الليبية لاستخراج المقابر الجماعية في ترهونة تفيد التقارير أن أكثر من 200 شخص ما زالوا في 
individuals are still missing, causing untold anguish to their families who are entitled to know the truth about the fate of their loved ones. A conference room paper on Tarhuna has been prepared and the mission will share its findings during the interactive dialogue of the Human Rights Council on the 6th of July. Additionally, enforced disappearances continue unabated in Libya. The mission expresses its grave concern at the continued disappearance of MP Siham Sergiwa. She was abducted in 2019. Discrimination and violence is a daily uh, feature of life for most women and girls in Libya. Of particular concern to the mission is the failure of domestic law to provide protection against sexual and gender-based violence is inherent to and contributes to impunity for such crimes. However, some positive developments, such as the establishment of two special courts for cases of violence against women and children are being noted. Children have been subjected to similar violations as adults, including summary executions, arbitrary detention, sexual and gender-based violence and torture. We have highlighted the restrictions and attacks on civil society organizations, on activists, human rights defenders, and on journalists. Human rights defenders and civil society activists are the backbone of any democratic society. They are the cornerstone for a sustainable transition to democracy and rule of law. In Libya, therefore, the persecution of activists based on gender discrimination, sexual orientation, minority, and regional background should stop. We call on the Libyan authorities to protect those activists and to ensure that freedoms are preserved in Libya. We have also continued to document consistent patterns of broad human rights violations against migrants, refugees, and asylum seekers, which still occur with total impunity in Libya's migration detention centers, in trafficking hubs, and in other contexts amounting to crimes against humanity. Many of the violations documented by the mission amount to international crimes, some of which are ongoing, a confidential list of individuals suspects will be compiled by the mission. This list will include the names of suspects, information about the potential suspects' position or role, and a summary of evidence compiled by the mission. Libya remains without a permanent constitution and a legal framework capable of addressing the most serious human rights violations and international crimes, and its judiciary system remains vulnerable to attacks and interference. We hail the effort of the judiciary in trying to function independently and impartially, despite the threats and intimidation and the FFM as part of its support of the authorities to strengthen the role in protecting and promoting human rights recommends the adoption of a holistic national human rights plan of action. The plan of action is aimed at addressing all findings and recommendations from the mission and other human rights bodies to ensure a sustainable transition to peace, democracy, and full respect for human rights and the to inclusive reconciliation. Today, more than ever before, the Libyan people deserve a strong commitment from within and also from the international community to bring justice and a sustainable peace to their country. This cannot be achieved without strong political will and unwavering support for democratic transition towards a state based on the rule of law and 
الانتخابات الحرة والنزيهات ضرورية لتحقيق هذه الغاية ونرى أنفسنا كبعثة كبعثة تقصي الحقائق ونرى أنفسنا كبعثة تقصي الحقائق أننا جزء من الالتزام الدولي بتحقيق العدالة والمساءلة في ليبيا شكرا لكم على حسن الاستماع ونحن جاهزون للإجابة على أسئلتكم وسلام عليكم Thank you, Mr. Aujar. So for those of you participating via Zoom, please raise your hand. I will first look at questions from the room. Uh, please, Emma Farge from Reuters. Good afternoon. Um, I had a couple of questions. I don't know if I could go with both of them now or one at a time. Uh, if you can ask your first two questions, it's okay. Okay, great. Um, so you've identified these three possible mass grave sites. Presumably the next step is to investigate there, and I see that you've urged the Libyan authorities to do that. To what extent does proceeding depend on their willingness to do that? Could you do that yourselves, for example, if uh, the permission doesn't come through or the cooperation doesn't come through from them? And secondly, um, there's a resolution to renew your mandate for nine months um, currently on the table. How confident are you that this resolution in its current format will give you sufficient flexibility and sufficient time to pursue the important work ahead? Thank you. So. Tracy. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I give the floor to Tracy to answer. Thank you very much for your question, Zemo. Um, you have noted that our mandate has officially ended um, and that there is a resolution relating to our extension. Um, the kind of work which you are um, proposing, I think the, the question, the first question is can we go ahead? and um, do the kind of investigations which are required if the state doesn't. Um, generally, the FFM's resources um, are fairly constrained. Um, we have had over the course of the last nine months a forensic doctor, which has facilitated in this year significant work which we were not able to do before. Um, but the kind of expansive investigations um, would probably um, have to involve the state. Um, and this is why we have in our report so clearly indicated that this is information that the state needs to act on. It's the state's duty to act as well. Um, our investigations hopefully will continue in a renewed period. And your second question um, relates to whether the resolution in the current form will give us sufficient flexibility to work. Um, you know, we have learned over the last two years uh, that there are many challenges in conducting investigations, um, some of which are bureaucratic. Um, even though we have access to Libya, as we've seen in the visit to Seba, there are challenges. Um, and so we would say that we would require the full commitment of the state um, to facilitate uh, adequate investigations to complete the mandate in the required time. Um, we also have many, as you can see in the two reports, ongoing investigations um, which haven't been completed and places we haven't yet fully investigated and been to. Uh, and that requires um, time and access um, which have to be facilitated elsewhere. Uh, so time is not content, time is not, is not separated from some of the questions of access and bureaucracy, which are essential. Um, we don't control them on the FFM side, but we're certainly impacted by them. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. I see a question from Mr. Nabil Abisab from Al Arabi. Please ask your question. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Uh, I'll open my video. Yeah, if I may ask in Arabic, can you hear me, please? Can yes, hear we can me, hear you. 
Okay, so uh, I will ask in Arabic language, please. Um, uh, uh, you mentioned that you're preparing a confidential list. Uh, I think, Mr. Muhammad, you mentioned the confidential list with the names of the perpetrators of violations, their positions and their roles. Why will this uh, list uh, be confidential? And uh, to what judicial party will it be addressed or how will the perpetrators be prosecuted and held accountable. Libya uh, is party to the Rome statutes. Uh, will you submit your findings to the ICC, especially as uh, you mentioned that there is the possibility that war crimes and crimes against humanity may have been perpetrated? Thank you. Please, Chaluka. Uh, thank you very much for your question. I might have missed part of it, trying to find the translation. Um, as you know, the International Criminal Court is already involved in carrying out investigations in Libya at this point in time. Um, it has got its own um, jurisdiction and mandate under the Rome Statute. Uh, it's investigating the most serious of crimes um, that have been committed or the evidence that will point out the commission uh, of such uh, crimes. Uh, our mandate from the Human Rights Council is to preserve an evidence uh, that we find and to hand it over to the Human Rights Council and its other processes associated with the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Now, whether eventually that will go to the ICC is not within our mandate um, you know, to, to decide. Uh, it will be decided by the Human Rights Council uh, and other bodies. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do uh, we have now have a question from Mr. John Leshner? Uh, no, sorry, I got it wrong. Do we have any other question? Emma Farge from Reuters. If I may, to follow up on my colleague's question, I, I don't think the, the question on the, the list was, was fully uh, answered. If you could just say who that would be shared with and why it's confidential. And uh, on Sabha, uh, could you explain why you weren't able to get access there? Are you still pursuing access and what do you think you might find on the ground? Thanks. In terms of uh, the, the first part of your question linked to the, uh, to the colleague, um, investigations are still going on uh, at the moment. And I think that the question uh, of the preparation of the list uh, will be at the tail end of the completion of the work of the FFM uh, because of the fact that uh, the evidence is leading to certain uh, trials, obviously. And if you read the report uh, carefully, I think you will see that uh, there are some sections where uh, at least responsibility is indicated uh, in terms of uh, specific uh, attacks. Um, for example, in the context of, that, of the violations of international humanitarian law, uh, we indicate um, an attack on Wariema Polyclinic uh, hit by rockets in April um, uh, 2020, um, and this was under you know, an attack under the control of particular groups which are indicated. So where attacks have occurred, um, indications are also made um, of the areas under control in relation to the militias. Um, and what we need to follow up then uh, is evidence of responsibility, individual criminal responsibility, whether through command structures or actual perpetrators. Um, and the next nine months will be quite critical uh, to that. And within the methods of investigations established by the field mission of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, uh, there is a database that is held um, in relation to such lists. And the lists will therefore be preserved uh, in that database for in future uh, use. Um, 
you also uh, asked on, um, you know, the, the, the question of, um, what was it? Do Seba. I remember? Seba, Seba. Oh, Seba yes. Seba. Uh, the question of Seba, I think we have detailed in, in the report as well, we had uh, a fairly detailed arrangement to go to Seba. Uh, logistics in place, we had hired a plane, um, but at the last minute, uh, we were told that it was not actually appropriate or safe for us uh, to go to Seba. And such is the reality uh, of the investigations. Um, so we hope that in the next nine months, we'll be able uh, to go to Seba as well. Um, as you recall, our mandate uh, is to carry out investigations throughout uh, the territory of Libya. Um, we have carried out investigations at least uh, in the east, uh, but we haven't been to the south, and, and SEBA is quite critical in making sure that uh, our report is, is fair, it's impartial in terms of its findings, and if we don't go to SEBA, the likelihood is that uh, whatever final um, findings we make, including issues of attribution, uh, will not be fair and will not represent the geographical scope in which those crimes have been committed. Thanks. Thank you. We'll now take a question from Lisa Schlein uh, from Voice of America. Lisa, you have the floor. Oh, hi. Hi, Pascal. That's nice of you. I had lowered my uh, <laughs> my uh, hand in the interim. But anyway, uh, do, do you so far have the number of uh, suspected uh, suspects that you have on your confidential list? Uh, uh, are they in the dozen, in the, in the dozens or... Um, uh, Hundreds, or I, I don't know. And do do they? I know you can't give the names, but do they also include uh, people from the current uh, government, recognized international government, as well as uh, others, rebel forces, and so forth? Thank you. Um, we cannot at this stage uh, indicate. Uh, any number of likely suspects um, that have come out of our investigations, largely because this is ongoing. Um, and if we indicated or released in any way, there are also serious consequences on the part of those that will be named. Um, fair trial consequences, uh, responsibility. So it would only be fair, um, I think, for this to be done uh, at the very end uh, of the process. Uh, of, of, of our investigations. Uh, but the magnitude is quite broad because so far we have carried out more than 3,000 interviews uh, in the process that um, we have been engaged uh, in the context of the deprivation of liberty, for example, detention. We've investigated 27 places, carried out more than 80 interviews. Uh, so that, that indicates at least uh, you know, the, the, the scope of investigations, which is related likely, um, you know, to the magnitude of perpetration um, and what then remains to be seen by following the trail of the evidence will be the actual perpetrators themselves. So numbers don't concern us very much. Uh, it is the nature of the violations and those individuals that are likely to be involved in those violations. Thank you. We'll take a question from the room, sir. If you could uh, announce your name and your media, please. Musa Asi Qanat Al Mayadin. Musa Asi Al Mayadin. Sayyid Muhammad, in the previous report last year, you spoke of the role of mercenaries in Libya. I did not say that in the beginning of the press conference. I don't know if you touched on this matter. What is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in Libya? Today, what is the role of mercenaries in
the numbers of missionaries are decreasing. Um, I think most of all because of partly the events and the conflicts in, in Ukraine, uh, where a market <laughs> may have been found elsewhere uh, for missionaries. So the, the number of Syrian missionaries, the uh, Wagner missionaries, um, is also decreasing. Uh, nonetheless, we note that in the context of the uh, African Union Convention on Missionaries, uh, missionaryism is a crime. Uh, and therefore, notwithstanding the fact that the numbers are decreasing, we are still looking into uh, the actual perpetration uh, of certain atrocities, um, crimes and violations by missionaries. Uh, in our report, we have focused so much on the planting of landmines uh, and the effect of those landmines. Uh, in relation to, you know, to the population um, and the fact that um, the role of landmines in this particular regard um, is, is part of uh, the conduit of international crimes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take another question from Nabil Avisa from Al Arabi. Unmute. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the chance again. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, you talked about uh, uh, that uh, some judges maybe are subject to uh, what kind of pressure or they are under pressure politically or different kind of pressure. Can you give us some examples um, about uh, how, in which environment, political environment, uh, the judges and uh, courts in general, uh, in, in which way uh, they are under pressure. Can you please explain? Thank you. Shukran uh, uh, Thank you Said, uh, Nabil. very much, Mr. Nabil. The situation in Libya is extremely complex. It is characterized by the fact that the country is witnessing a division وهذا الوضع أثر على انقسام كل المؤسسات وحدها المؤسسة القضائية الليبية أصرت على أن تحافظ على وحدتها السلطة القضائية رغم الانقسام الحاد ظلت على الأقل على المستوى المؤسسات والشكل سلطة موحدة uh, divisions in the country, the higher judicial council has tried to preserve the status and role of the judiciary. Therefore, you see a paragraph in the commending the efforts of the judiciary. However, it is unfortunate that this authority does not have the capacity of implementing all its decisions. And like human rights defenders and others, judges and those working in courts have faced a series of pressures as well as uh, attacks and violations. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Well, in that case, that brings us to the end of this press conference. Uh, I thank you all for attending this brief. Would you like to have closing remarks, sir? Uh, At the end of this press conference, I would like to express our 
الذين ساعدوا بعثة تقصي الحقائق في عملها من النشطاء وأسري الضحايا وفعالية المجتمع المدني وأيضا أن أحيي تعاون الدولة الليبية خاصة من خلال بعثة ليبيا هنا في جنيف على التفاعل الإيجابي وعلى تقديم كل الدعم لعملنا وأيضا نود أن ننقل إليكم تطلعات المواطنات والمواطنين في ليبيا بشكل جماعي إلى الخروج من هذه الأزمة وإلى العيش في بلد آمن مطمئن تسوده الديمقراطية ودولة القانون ونحن سنسعى في التمديد المقبل إذا صادق عليه مجلس حقوق الإنسان كما نأمر وإن شاء الله سيصادق عليه في استكمال كل الأبحاث والتحقيقات التي نجريها والتي ما زلنا في حاجة إلى تمحيص الوقع المتعلقة بها سنقوم بزيارة الجنوب للتدقيق والتحقيق في الخروقات الفضيعة التي تعيش هذه المنطقة كما سنواصل تحقيقاتنا في كل من بنغازي وأطرابلس بنزاهة واستقلالية وإن شاء الله سنقدم التقرير النهائي الذي سيتضمن الوضعية العامة بكل نزاهة ومسؤولية واحترام لروح التوصية كما صدق عليه المجلس شكرا جزيلا على انتباهكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله Well, thank you very much all for attending this press briefing and a special thanks to the three members of the fact-finding mission, Mr. Auja, Ms. Robinson and Mr. Bayani for their availability today. As I said earlier, the report of the fact-finding mission as well as the conference room paper on the violations committed in the Libyan town of Tahuna are available on the FFM's webpage and both documents will be officially presented before the Council this coming Wednesday in the morning. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day.